My name is Paul Garner and I come from the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. I'm a medic by background and for the last 20 years I've worked in systematic reviews. Systematic reviews are increasingly used to inform international development. Systematic reviews are important because um, researchers spend a lot of time in their primary research doing, asking interesting questions and carrying out the studies very carefully to avoid bias. But in the past, when they came to summarize those, all, those, all that research, um, they didn't use rigorous methods. For some reason, the principles of science went out of the window when they started summarizing information across studies and people used expert opinion. So a lot of policies were based on what experts believed the evidence showed. So thank goodness things have changed. So part of the change came through uh, the efforts of the Cochrane Collaboration, which is this huge network of people that was set up 20 years ago, committed to working collaboratively to assemble and update reliable evidence about the effects of healthcare. This was a revolutionary organisation when it started because it challenged the establishment and it used uh, explicit methods to carry out these reviews um, and it talked about collaboration and not competition. So the Cochrane Collaboration has mechanisms to avoid um, the same review being done by different groups, getting people to work together rather than to compete with each other. The other thing about uh, the collaboration is that it also updates its reviews so that um, a review will rapidly become out of date as new evidence emerges. So there are mechanisms in place to incorporate new evidence to keep reviews up to date. So I've been involved in reviews in infectious diseases and these have helped sometimes confirm and underpin policies so the review of impregnated mosquito nets uh, in children demonstrated that deaths went down uh, and that helped underpin policies for DFID. Um, a review of oral rehydration salt solution uh, demonstrated that the solution in use at the time had too much salt in it and this led to a change in that area and there are currently a, a series of reviews that help inform uh, malaria treatment policies that I've been involved in. So at the end of the day systematic reviews are one small part of the picture of informed decision making that is backed up by good science. Uh, systematic reviews help inform policy, they help inform research and they also help identify areas where there's uncertainty.